which is king in business. We're in business to make a profit. And so the more productive that you can be, the more profitability there is to make. So basically productivity and, and really rough sort of definition is about how efficiently can you turn an X amount of resources into some unit producing productivity. So for, for McDonald's, the main resources um, that we look at is, uh, is equipment, um, people, and products, okay? So we're looking for efficiencies in equipment, people, and products. And when you're talking about a business like McDonald's, which is high volume and low margin, which means that we serve a lot of customers, okay? Thousands of customers every day. That's where the high volume comes in. But we don't make a lot of money out of every Big Mac or every sort of uh, medium Coke or French fries that we sell. We only make a little bit of profitability. So if we're not being productive, it's actually very easy for me at the end of the month to actually lose money as opposed to make money, which is not a good thing if we're losing money. So I've got to be very, very productive and efficient in my operations in order for my business to be successful. So a significant amount of businesses go out of business, um, you know, and they don't make it mainly because of they don't have the volume of sales or they don't have the productivity or profitability within their business. So today I'm wanting to talk a little bit about equipment, people and, and products. Um, I, I need to start off by saying that McDonald's is a, is a, is a, it's a system, okay? So McDonald's uh, is, is a global brand. We try and look at our business as a system. We try and automate things as much as possible. Instead of leaving it up to the intuition or, or decision making of our staff or individuals, we try and create a, 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 a system of procedures and policies and standards and ways of doing things, okay? And we document those, those systems. So it's very formal, and that's one of McDonald's secrets to, to McDonald's success is that we have been able to standardize what we do so then we can replicate it time and time again and maintain a very high standard um, consistently which has made us world famous, okay? And we've done that through creating a set of systems. So when we look at productivity, we're looking at it as a system. How can I, as the owner of this business, empower and, and train my staff and managers to work productively and efficiently on the floor? And by using systems is a really great way for me to do that. So um, I'm gonna jump around, just stay there, Derek. Um, so, for example, um, this is a system for, for front counter, okay? This is just one of the training tools that, that we have, and this is what we call a, uh, an operations training card, an OTC for front counter. And, uh, and so th these are all the, the steps that our front counter people need to go through in order to serve people the McDonald's way to the McDonald's standard. Now you might have a way of serving a customer and, and you, as a customer you might like it to be served a certain way, I might like to be served a certain way. So if we all made our own mind up how we were going to do things, we would have all sorts of different variations and permutations on what our definition of service was. But at McDonald's we use customer um, research to figure out what the best way to serve our customers are. We then systemize it into a procedures and we document it. So we use a lot, we use a lot of video and a lot of graphics these days. And this is a step two guide on when, whenever we are training our, um, our crew on how to serve a customer. Just as an example, okay, so that makes our training system very, very efficient because instead of you know, turning up and making it up every day, we can use tools, um, and so that, that makes us very efficient. So if you apply that to all aspects of, of our business, so this is for French fries, and um, you know, this is a station training card on how to do French fries. Again, using graphics, because a, a picture paints a thousand words. So that's what I mean by we document and systemize what we do. And in whatever business you're in, I would recommend that you had a similar philosophy. Try and automate as much as you can, and that'll then become very, very, your business can become very efficient and, and therefore productive. 
Now, at McDonald's, we, we use a series of, uh, um, of, of systems, we call them maps as well. So um, the key focus that we're sort of talking about today is looking at um, uh, getting you guys to look at my business and identify areas uh, where I may not be efficient and try and work out how you might be able to fix a particular bottleneck um, in, in, in my service system that, that may need um, you know, to be fixed in order to get service flowing and things like that. So um, just like before, um, to do front counter and before how I showed you the training car to do french fries, this is a bit more complex because this is at a shift management level, okay? So this is all the things that a shift manager needs to do. And if I sort of blow some of that stuff up, it sort of starts the, the day before. It's all about preparation. So the day before a shift, the shift manager needs to come in and review the, the roster um, and review what sort of sales patterns are happening to figure out how busy we're going to be. To check the crew schedule to make sure that we've got enough staff and the right quality of staff. And to review the products and stock levels uh, so that we've got enough stock for the day. and. Um, and so on and so forth. So I've talked about equipment, people and products. As a shift manager, my managers are in charge of managing equipment, people and products in order to serve customers to a high standard and to do it efficiently and productively and therefore profitably. Okay, so these are all the things that, that my shift manager needs to take into consideration um, to set themselves up for a good shift and in order to be productive. So a good way for you to sort of look at my business in a, in a very sort of small and manageable and, and, and uh, very high profile way is just think of my shift managers. When you come into the restaurant at whatever time of the day and look at the shift manager and they are managing all of these resources on the shift at once. So it's just like being a, a, a mini business owner and a bit of a snapshot within the business at that time. So the restaurant manager and the restaurant owner is myself. We're thinking about the same sort of things, but just on a bigger level. So it's very good for you to look at productivity through the eyes of my shift manager. Okay, so um, for me to be productive, we, we standardize and systemize the procedures, policies, and standards within the business. So um, if I've got time, I want to sort of jump around and talk about this. So these are all the things, so this is working the day before, there's a pre-shift routine that my managers need to go through and then a pre-shift changeover when one shift manager, like the day shift manager, hands over to the night shift manager, there's a process to hand over um, um, the shift, we call that changeover. Um, and then, I'll blow that up, so that's sort of the, the pre-shift sort of stuff. And then down this, this line here, we're talking about what we're doing during the shift. So even before the shift has started, there's a whole lot of things that we need to get in, into place. And, and this, uh, this line here starts to talk about um, you know, all the processes and steps and things that the shift manager needs to uh, do in order to, to run the shift well. So there's some really key points out of all of that, and I just want to highlight them. The first is this pre-shift checklist. In order for the shift to be productive, we've got to go through a checklist of uh, before the shift to make sure we've got enough stock, the equipment is in the right place and working correctly, and that our people are right. So um, yeah, we use shift management tools and uh, a lineup, which which is where every one position is going to be on the shift today. A shift plan. Okay, so today you know it's a it's a Friday, so we know it's going to be busy between twelve and two. So between you know my day shift manager is going to say between ten and, and twelve, we're going to be preparing for the shift, and then twelve and two we're going to set some goals for for the busy time. Then afterwards we're going to clean up stock up. So there's a bit of a plan for the whole shift. We're going to communicate expectations um, uh, for the current shift, our end use and communicate it. So it's about what are our goals today? How fast do we want drive through to be? What's our goal? How many customers do we want to serve today? You know, and try and make it um, quantifiable so that the staff that I've got working sort of makes it fun. It's sort of like turning it into a sport. You know, you might play golf and that's kind of good fun, but the minute you start taking score, that's when you start improving your golf. So if you can um, 
put up goals and, 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 and score the shift and, and you know how many burgers we make it can be different things from, from how, how many sales to how fast drive through might be and things like that and that's all written up um, onto our, our shift plan so that pre-shift checklist is very important we use checklists again so that I write down all the things that I want my shift managers to do in a checklist and they go ahead and do it so nothing's missed out so that systematic approach is very important. Um, so I'm going to come back to that one because so um, so this one at the top here. So this is a little bit about setting a really positive environment for you know for the shift. So if you've got a really stink you know restaurant you know shift manager that you know that they're, they're, they're having a bad day and they've broke up with their girlfriend and their TV's broken down and their car's been repossessed and they're really grumpy and they come in and you know they sort of doing it really hard and so everyone on the shift is you know getting told off it's not a very nice um, place to be whereas if you've got a positive manager that comes in treating people with dignity and respect using people's names saying hello and goodbye and please and thank you and all that sort of stuff it raises the, the um, you know the spirit in amongst the team and you've worked and played in sports teams and you know that sometimes the morale's really good and you know how much more productive it can be so it's about treating every employee with with respect and dignity courtesy and creating an environment of hospitality so sometimes often you can walk into a business or a classroom and you can get a sense of the place it's like thick with negativity or thick with energy and, and you know and so the difference in productivity by creating that environment can be very very significant what else have I got so um, up the top here is about positioning okay so we've got about uh, you know 15 different stations in the kitchen we've got french fries we've got drive through we've got front counter we've got you know being on the grill we've got actually assembling the burgers and things like that so it's very very important that we position everybody um, on the on the um, on the floor in the correct order with the correct um, skill set that suits that person so you know the All Blacks it's kind of easy because there's only 15 people right but they've all got positions at McDonald's we can be quiet one day and busy the next we might have five people on a shift at one point or 25 you know at, at some other point so it's um, we have guides and so we've systemized and documented where we think people should be positioned in order to um, you know make sure we get the most amount of productivity and aces in their places is a key thing so we've got particular positions that are more important than others that are real critical that those positions work very well in order to be productive so it's important that we have our most skilled and qualified people in those positions it's called aces in their places in order to be productive okay um, very conscious of time so uh, you know this, you're fine. this one targets and goals and as I said just set some goals make it fun guys if we can do you know 200 customers this hour you know everyone can get a free dessert or you know you can have an extra five minutes on your break or something you know it doesn't have to be a much but it just creates that that team atmosphere what was the one this is the one in particular that I think that uh, that we need to focus on today we call them bottlenecks or danger zones okay and so if there are bottlenecks or danger zone issues at any area the shift manager acts in a timely manner um, so it's very important that the shift manager is wandering around the shift and uh, and trying to identify where those bottlenecks might be so I sort of go, go back to my kitchen layout here um, so if, if you remember, I, I don't know whether you're able to visualize that, but this is the front counter. Um, um, so this is the front counter here. So this is where customers queue up and order. You can see the French fry station over to the right. I've got cars going through drive through here. We've got the drive through booth. And you know McDonald's here, you can look down the kitchen, and this is where they're assembling the burgers here. So. Um, you know, we use a rule of three. 
Uh, okay, so that means the shift manager is wandering around the shift looking for bottlenecks, looking for weaknesses where a bottleneck is exactly like a bottleneck. If you've got a, a bottle of Coke and you, and you tip it upside down, the bottleneck is what prevents the, the liquid from flowing out of the bottle, okay? So it's the same situation. A bottleneck is a, a, a point where it's a weakness, where it's stopping the flow of productivity from happening. So it could be a piece of equipment that's broken down. It could be that the, we've run out of stock on the, we, there's no longer any more french fries, we need to run into the freezer and get them. That is going to slow things up. Or it could be that the person on french fries is very slow and is holding everybody up. And I either need to get another person into french fries or I need to get a better person onto french fries. Okay, so generally speaking, the, um, what am I going to do here if I go, is that too big? Sorry, let me just uh, tidy that up. So generally speaking, I'm going to draw a series of X's in the areas that are predominantly um, the, the danger zones. So, um, and I'm going to put one in McCafe as well, just for, so when you visualise this project, I want you to look at the different danger zones that we might have. One is front counter, this is drive through, this is french fries, this is the drink station, and I've got the kitchen here, and I've also got uh, McCafe down there as well, okay, so um, McCafe is another zone that we need to look at. So the rule of three means that if we've got three customers waiting on front counter, that then becomes a danger zone. The rule of three says once we've got three cars in drive through that's now a danger zone. French fries means once I've got three orders of french fries up, then french fries becomes a danger zone. And if I've got three lots of burgers in the queue waiting to be made, then the kitchen can be a danger zone. So a danger zone is areas where it's going to um, prevent the flow of productivity. And my shift manager's job is to move equipment, people and products around to try and counter those bottlenecks and eliminate those bottlenecks. So, you know, for example, it might be that, um, that uh, you know, in generally as a customer, you can see the danger zones by people standing still. If staff are standing still, they're waiting for something to be made, and that can generally be, um, you know, the danger zone. So if you notice two or three people standing by French fries doing nothing, generally speaking, that's telling me that French fries are a danger zone. So if you've got two or three people standing, waiting for products to be made, and not doing anything, they're being unproductive, so that's telling me that the kitchen is the danger zone, okay? And the same with getting drinks, or, you know, so serving people faster could be the danger zone. So um, I'm probably going to um, leave Derek to, to maybe expand on, on that if he likes to back in class, but um, um, so you can sort of see um, some of the tools and techniques that we use in order to um, uh, um, identify, sort of prevent bottlenecks or issues from happening, trying to identify when and where those bottlenecks are occurring, and then trying to work out how we can fix um, th th those bottlenecks in, in some way. So the last thing I want to go over in about 32 and a half seconds is, um, is just, this is Gap Buster, don't worry about the term Gap Buster, okay? It's actually what we call for our peak time. So between 12 and 1 at lunchtime today, for example, that is our peak time. That's when we're going to serve by far the most amount of customers on the, the lunch shift, on the day shift. So we, we want to go into lockdown. We basically need to get ourselves in a situation where we can have everybody that's rostered on the floor focused on serving customers. So at the start of your shift, we need shift plans, shift expectations, make sure our positioning is sorted out. So 45 b b minutes before the lockdown, we're, we're starting to go for a walk and make sure everything's clean and tidy. Okay, so we, we just go for a walk around and we make sure that 24-2 is a stock up, that everything's stocked up. 
that uh, the dining room's clean and that we've had a look in every area to make sure. Because if the dining room's not clean, in between 